Hey guys, welcome back to another chill tutorial. Today we're gonna to be making another logo. It's going to be the NBC or Peacock logo. I believe it's just NBC. So I got my image reference on the right and then I got Blender on the left. Let's go ahead and hop right into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and save. I'm gonna delete my cube, delete my light here. I'm also going to hide my video capture device here. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and start uh, piecing this together. So I'm gonna add in an image plane here. Um, go to my downloads, add in our reference here just so we can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to make my world color white. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and force myself to start with just the modeling process and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to move my logo up like that. I'm going to add in a mesh and let's just go ahead and think of the best thing that we could use here. I'm thinking we could probably get away with the cube. Um, and then we're just going to use a mirror modifier here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my cube. I'm going to go ahead and place it kind of in front of everything here, just this way here. Cool. I'm going to add in a plane so we have kind of a floor to work with as well. I'm just going to apply like a new shader to that, just like a darker shader so we can kind of see. Um, and then with this cube, I think what I'm going to do is I am going to edit it in edit mode and just move the vertices around until I kind of find something that I like. Um, I think I might start by going into edit mode. I'm gonna to go to material preview, go into edit mode and just subdividing it. And then I'm gonna to go to my x-ray mode, take these two, bring them down here, maybe something like that, scale it down a bunch. And I'm gonna bring it all the way to the corner here, scale it down a bunch, bring it to the corner. Again, I'm just kind of eyeballing what I think this should look like. I'm going to move this here, scale this out. This is looking really solid. And then I'm going to take this, move it up here. Actually, first I'm going to make a loop cut here. I'm going to take all of this, scale it up. I'm also going to end up uh, using a subdivision surface modifier. You guys will see in a second why I'm going to do that. Cheesy. And we're going to go ahead and make another loop cut here. Cool. And again, we're just kind of basically like more or less generally following the way this is going to end up looking. This looks really good. Take this, kind of scale it in a bit. Just like that. And then we're going to extrude this on the Y axis. Scale that down as well. And then I'm gonna extrude it one more time. Oops, extrude it just like that. Scale that down a bunch. And then I'm gonna move it over here. Now, if we look at this from the side view, it's going to look not exactly like you would think, but I do think this is coming along nicely. So I'm gonna tab out of edit mode. I'm gonna scale this down on the X axis like that, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to go back over here, save this, go to my modifiers tab, and I'm gonna see if we can get this to actually look like um, really, really smooth. So I'm gonna add in a subdivision surface, a bunch of subdivisions, go back over here. That looks really good. Go back into edit mode, add another loop cut here, just like that. And you guys can pretty much from this point just make these as good as you wanna get them. I think that's close enough for what I want. Um, now I'm kind of ready to go in here and add in another modifier. So I'm going to add in a mirror modifier, whatever that is. All right, mirror modifier. And then I'm going to add in an empty, scale that down. And I'm going to make my empty, uh, what the mirror modifier is mirroring and select my Y axis. Now, as you can see, I just perfectly um, aligned those right there. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to duplicate this, right? And I'm going to rotate it on the X axis. I'm going to place it where I think this one would be. And then I think I'm going to, I looks like I'm going to have to also scale it on the Y axis as well a little bit. That looks good. And I'm going to continue this process. And then what I'll eventually do is I will separate all of this. That looks pretty good right about there now you'll probably notice if you look there's this little cutout right here we are going to be cutting that out in a second but before we do that 
let's go ahead and go over to cycles GPU I'm gonna hide this plane for a second or sorry that um, hide everything for a second as you can see we already have our 3d objects it's already looking really really cool I'm gonna take these and I'm going to apply our modifiers same with these apply apply and apply apply and then what I'm gonna do is tab into edit mode select everything and then I'm gonna go ahead to separate by loose parts now we have two separate pieces uh, do the same for this one tab into edit mode separate by loose parts tab out of that and then tab into edit mode select everything separate by loose parts why can't I see there we go separate by loose parts cool all right now everything is its own thing so what we'll do now is I think I'm gonna make each one of these glass um, I just really think this is gonna look good when I go to do this I'm also gonna make sure I'm on my GPU I am and then I'm gonna use my color picker to get this nice purple color right here I'm also going to move this back on the x-axis um, and then I'm just go ahead and turn that roughness down a little bit 1.2 that looks pretty good um, the purple looks a little strange and I'm not sure why maybe we have to go into our light paths but I am going to end up making everything 10 anyway 50 cool and then we'll just go ahead and make some glass for each one of these um, and we are going to want to use like the same uh, IOR for each one of these as well so we're gonna go to glass go to this and eventually yeah we're gonna have to really mess around with the IOR of these they don't look that good right now and that's probably because we don't really have an environment texture so I'm gonna go ahead and add in just a simple little environment texture here cool better than nothing and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hide this plane for a second because I do think this plane or maybe make it white because I think it's throwing off the coloration of everything I'm also going to add in a light source at some point, but for now, I'm just going to continue to make these glass materials. Let's go ahead and target that orange color. Uh, I'm going to turn the roughness down, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new material here. I am going to target that yellow color there, and I am going to turn the roughness down. 1.45 for all these looks good. 1.45. I'm also going to shade auto smooth for every single one of these. Yep, shade all the smooth, shade all the smooth. Now for this one right here, we're gonna create a new glass material as well. I'm going to give this right there, that's perfect. And lower the roughness. And then for the last one, another glass material. Target that green color. Now we're pretty much done, but we need to kind of clean up some of this lighting and stuff. Now first thing I wanna do is I wanna go over to my color management. Uh, go to high contrast or maybe medium high contrast and kind of raise that exposure quite a bit um, We're not really noticing much here with the floor plane So I'm gonna also decrease that roughness kind of give us something nice to look at there And I'm also going to set up my camera as well. So I'm gonna make my camera zero 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 and then I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees on this as well bring it back like that bring it up snap to our camera here cool this is looking really really solid and then I'm gonna do 1080 by 1920 and of course I'm gonna make a nice uh, a nice what do you call it like background here so I'm gonna select this edge extrude it up select this edge bevel bevel it out like that I'm going to increase the segments auto smooth I'm gonna go back to my camera, zoom in here, 85 millimeter lens, bring it up, bring this down, and then I'm also going to hide our logo as well. Now, so far this is looking really good, but I think this these need more. Um, there's not a lot to these, and I think it's because mainly because of the lighting scenario, so I'm gonna to try to choose something a little bit different here, maybe this winter lake. Oh, sorry, that's the exact same one we had. I think I'm gonna go with sunrise and see how that looks yeah this is more like it so I'm gonna go ahead and snap back to camera view hide this for a second now we do need to still make that cut in this shape right here so in order to do that I think what I'm gonna do is I am going to add in a little piece that is actually going to cut that out and then I think I'm gonna sculpt it so I'm gonna kind of bring this forward on the x-axis here so we can kind of define that shape right there so I'm just gonna add in a 
I think I'm going to add in, I want to say a Taurus or maybe a, let me think here for a second, guys. Let's, let's try a cylinder, scale it down, rotate it on the Y axis, bring it up, bring it forward towards us, all right? Scale it down a bunch, bring it over here. Let's go ahead and see how we can make this thing match up to our to our object here. Scale it in, bring it down. Um, and I think I'm gonna scale it on the Y axis too. And then what I'm gonna end up doing is rotating it a little bit. And then the rest I'm gonna do in sculpting mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and head, head over to the sculpting tab. I'm gonna head over to our material preview. I am going to click on remesh 0.01 remesh. And then I'm going to make sure that I have my elastic deform tool on. Kind of increase my radius here. And then I'm just going to bring everything up like this. I'm actually going to make sure, I gotta be really careful here because you don't want, you want to push up on the bottom like this, right? But you want to also be careful to make sure you're not messing anything else up in the process. So I'm just going to be going like this, right? Kind of just trying to get this as close as possible. And then you want to kind of zoom in here and pinch, start pinch, pinching this edge here like that. And just kind of bring this down as much as possible. As you guys can see, we're starting to get the shape that we want. And we're going to use this to cut out, um, to cut everything out here. So this is basically going to be our Boolean object when we're done with it. I uh, just want to go to the side view to see how this is looking. Um, not bad. We probably should have turned on some symmetry at some point, but that's okay. Okay, I'm all right with it. Looking decent here. Cool. Pretty happy with it. What do you guys think? I, I think it's pretty good. I think I'm going to go ahead and just continue with that. Kind of bring this down a little bit. Maybe come back in here. Curve that like that. I think we're going to go back to layout. I'm going to go ahead and scale this on the X axis a little bit. So now the goal is to bring this back as close as possible to this so that that extended part cuts into this one. So I'm going to click on this object, go to my Boolean modifier and hope that this properly cuts into it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Let's just see if that worked. It looked like it actually worked pretty well. So now we're just going to hide this. Go back to render view, snap to the camera, hide the actual logo, and then we're just gonna move this camera down a bit for the purposes of this shot. Scale this up. And as you can see, we're already starting to look really good, but I wanna do a few more things. I wanna actually go into the shading tab, go into our world properties. As usual, I just kinda wanna add a texture coordinate and I wanna actually adjust the Z rotation of our background as usual. This is a technique that I think I've seen someone use before and I, I love this technique because you can now adjust the Z rotation of the whole world. So as you can see, we can completely adjust the Z rotation like this, right? And if we take our plane, we can then rotate our plane and have like the NBC logo be like, you know, backlit basically by this, by this amazing sunlight here. Uh, bring that up and if we really wanted to we could get into like caustics and stuff like that But this is starting to already look so cool um, I want to go ahead into my light paths. I want to do filter glossy zero and then for all these I do want to I want to cast shadow caustics So the first thing we want to do is click on our plane go to our shading Receive shadow caustics and then for all of these we want to highlight each one of these Right, let me just highlight all of them like this cool let me just make sure I have only those selected we're good um, and then I want to go in holding alt I want to do cast shadow caustics cool just like that and as you can see we already have those nice shadow caustics um, and if we click on our floor plane we can kind of increase that roughness a bit um, this is already looking so good um, and I do want to add in a light a point light put it right here Increase that uh, power to 2000. Okay, shadow caustics, go ahead and click on that as well. 
And as you can see, now we have some serious shadow caustics uh, from both the actual HDRI and our light as well. And we can increase or decrease that radius. I'm gonna increase it a little bit, bring it down. It should be getting, there we go, that's a little bit better. I'm gonna bring that up higher. That looks good. Um, and we should be able to adjust our actual floor plane so that we can kind of see those caustics a little bit more. I'm gonna to try to stick to something white with a higher roughness. And then let's go over to our exposure as well. Kind of put that back at one. Medium high contrast or medium low contrast looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with most of this. I, I'm kind of liking the way that this is turning out. I do think we could experiment with maybe a different uh, HDRI here. That one looks cool too. We could try this one. Again, you're gonna get drastic differences depending on what you're gonna use here. That one looks really, really neat. And again, we can kind of mess around with our camera as well. We can add some depth of field. I'll just select one of these objects and do like a very intense depth of field here. That looks really cool. And I, I do think this came out really nicely. Again, we can adjust all of our settings as needed. I'm gonna push this further back into the X axis back here, right? But as you guys can see, adjusting this, we get some incredible effects here. I just think this looks so, so good. Um, now, you guys can go ahead and do whatever you like from this point. I, I'm starting to think this looks really, really good. I'm very happy with it. Um, again, we can kind of go in and adjust our roughness for our floor. We can You can really adjust anything you like at this point. I, I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm probably going to render this. The only other thing I could think of is maybe to switch back to our original sunrise. That looks amazing too. Um, you can experiment around with different HDRIs, as you guys know. Um, it's going to completely and drastically change the way that everything looks. So you guys choose what you think looks best. I like this. I kind of like the um, the sky is on fire. Oh, I just chose an 8K texture. So that's another thing. You, you don't need an 8K texture. You can choose one that is absolutely not 8K. But this looks incredible. Um, and then you guys can go back to your shading, of course. Adjust your Z rotation of your sky and choose whatever you'd like. I kind of like having that slight, um, like those clouds in the background with the yellow. I don't mind that. I think it looks good. So guys, without further ado, um, I think this tutorial, tutorial is pretty much complete. We started with the cube and we ended up with this. I just think this looks so stunning. Um, and then of course, when you go to render, we can just, we can kind of keep the defaults or we can do like, you know, 2000 samples with optics denoising, um, kind of keep those sample counts high, turn off filter glossy. Um, you can try fast GI approximation that might, might, might not affect it too much, but I do think this just looks so clean, so good. Um, I'm really happy with it. And if you guys need to adjust that Boolean piece, you can do that as well. But I'm very, very happy with how this came out. So that is pretty much it, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my camera back on to say goodbye. Um, you guys take it easy. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you guys got some value out of this. These are very fun to make and pretty easy to make overall. So if you guys want to keep seeing things like this, definitely let me know. Um, and uh, again, we can go back in here. We can do anything else we need to, but I'm not going to get too much into it because I tend to draw out the tutorial too long. So I'm going to stop it here, cut myself short, maybe modify a few more things in post. But um, you guys have a great day. Take it easy. Let me know which logo you guys would like to see next. Have a great day. Bye-bye.